2016 and we're helping you to make the right choices. Welcome. This is Plus 275. My name is Bright Nana Amf. We're taking you to the eastern region. Precisely, this is a constituency that, of course, uh, will uh, see some action because it's been held by the NPP for quite a long time. The NDC says it is ready at getting out the NPP candidate, the incumbent member of parliament in that area, in that constituency. Uh, the NDC says it is ready to unseat uh, that incumbent MP. Now, the guest in the studio this morning to take a look at uh, what exactly uh, that constituency has to offer uh, its constituents and uh, the members of parliament are uh, the NPP's incumbent member of parliament, Nana J. Boatin, and then the NDC's candidate, Haruna Apau Redu. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining me on Plus 275. We're grateful you found your way to uh, our studios. Now, uh, this is a simple debate we're organizing, letting your constituents know what you can do or what you can help them do uh, if they give you their mandate to represent them in parliament. In the next few minutes, we'll be talking about what your visions are, what you want to do for them, and why they should give you their mandate. First of all, before we start, I want the two of you to exchange pleasantries. Give me a handshake, letting your constituent know that it's a battle of ideas and not one of war, and that is to send a signal that 2016 is a peaceful election, it's only a battle of ideas. And so for the next three minutes, I'll get you the opportunity to look straight into the eyes of your constituent and tell them why they should let you go and represent them in Parliament. Once again, welcome to the program. I'm starting with you, Haruna, because you are trying hard to unseat an incumbent member of Parliament uh, who has been there for quite a long time. Haruna, welcome to the show. I'm starting with you. Now, you have seen the member of Parliament, the incumbent member of Parliament, uh, let that constituency for so long. Why do you want to unseat him? And why do you think that the constituent should give you their mandate? You have three minutes to go through this. Thank you very much, <coughs> Nana. Let me use this opportunity to say a big uh, good morning to our cherished viewers and also to my constituents. That is New Javan North, spanning from Efidjase, Asokore, Yoko, Asokore, Kuma, Paplai, Akodum, Adumpusu. And also to my hardworking constituency, executives and branch executives, and also all other persons and individuals who believe in the crusade of a parliamentary change in New Jabin North. I say a big good morning to you all. Nana, just as you said, I believe that uh, New Jabin North has come of age. New Jabin North needs a different direction. New Jabin North, you know, where we find ourselves today, the seat has, you know, been ruled in the past 16 years by the largest opposition party that is the MPP and clearly you realize that they have little to show for being in power all this while and like I keep on saying even though I am not yet the MP but I have a lot to show for my people and my people will also attest to it one minute more very recently I took the opportunity to you know put up a public standpipe at Papalai, a community in the New Jersey North. From there, I also got in some excavator to dredge a big river called Bediasi River in Akodum. You know, whenever there's a heavy downpour of rain, half seconds. of the community is displaced. Aside that, we went to um, we went to Asokoru Zongu. There is that footbridge, a very big one, that I also use my little small means to make sure that we are able to give that place, you know, a facelift. And all this, I believe that even though I am not entitled, or I don't take common fund, I don't take SIF, what my brother or my senior colleague is taking, this is Ten what I'm able to now. mobilize from a little small way. Mm. And I believe that this is not even the last. I also registered about 2,100 people free on health insurance. And that program I have dubbed it my health, my life. Four. And very soon, I'm, I'm, I'm extending this project Three. to cover all the senior high schools and the general public Two. within the New Jersey North constituency. Just and to one. make sure that the constituency has a facelift. I'm grateful. I'm grateful for your time. I'm called, you get more opportunity to talk more about what you're doing. But you uh, seem to be talking about leadership. Let me go to Nana uh, J. Uh, Boateng. Now, you've been in the seat for quite uh, some time. He is cataloging a number of things that he thinks he has done. That is why his constituents should give him the mandate. Why should New job in North retain you to allow you to go re represent them in Parliament. Well, thank you, my brother. Uh, let me say good morning to 
the, your viewers, and then also to say good morning to the good people of New Jabin mm -hmm. North constituency, who by, by whose grace I've become their member of parliament for almost four years now. And uh, if, it, it goes back. I've been the municipal chief executive for this municipality too. And uh, by the kind of relationship that we have had over these years, in terms of what we have been able to accomplish for the constituency, mm. I believe that we have struck a good relationship. And uh, my expectation is that the good people of New Jabin are expecting that I, we continue with this relationship such that we, 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 we get to the next level of development. So in terms of development and other things, I believe uh, my brother was talking about things that is, is done. Uh, I believe at the right, right time, we'll get to that point where we'll catalog uh, the kind of things that we have been able to do for the people of New York North over this period of time when I've been a member of parliament. Mm. I'm grateful, Nana, for uh, doing your submission within uh, below the time allotted you. Mm. Come to you more for uh, some uh, better clarification. Now, now let's go back to uh, specifics. Now, how, now, let's start. This time we have two minutes. Now, one key development challenge in New Jersey North that you have identified that when you go to Parliament, when you get the mandate, uh, you use your office to ensure that development challenge is overcome. You can do this in two minutes. Start now. Nana, the major problem confronting us as a people in New Jersey North is leadership. We have a leadership crisis currently in New Jersey North. When you wake up in the morning, you know, especially when you come to my place or my residence, the number of people who troop to my place, there are those who come there for, you know, just guidelines, their direction, career counseling. Others come in, you know, uh, hoping that they will get some small support to establish a small business or even pay for their hospital bills and what have you. And when I sit down, I ask myself, the reasons for voting people in office is to make sure that they carry our burdens along and move along with us. Our member of parliament here, as we know, is entitled to common fund, is entitled to SIF, monetary and evaluation fund, and MP show of the health insurance fund. But we ask ourselves, where has all these resources gone to? Why is it that our MP cannot avail himself One more minute. periodically or regularly in such a way that he, could, he will be able to have a community interaction with the people? Now do you feel that there is a clear disconnection from where their MP sits and where they are. And I believe that he voted into power constantly and continuously. You'll be able to we'll be, we'll be having some meetings with the, uh, with the various communities and the key stakeholders involved to make sure that we take along their concerns and problems and find ways and means to which we'll be able to address them. And two, to also establish an MP's office, two MP's office. One will serve the rural folks, Akodum and its you know, adjoining communities. Then the other one will also serve the urban communities like Asokore and Efidasi. So there will always be a point of call and a point of interaction, a point of reference from the constituent and that of the office of the member <coughs> of parliament. Mm. And clearly, this is what is missing in New Jersey. All right. Let me ask you a, a question before I move on to Naneje Boati. Now, uh, the work of a member of parliament is uh, done almost uh, uh, in a crowd. Uh, a greater percentage of it, uh, you sit on the floor of a house. Now, you, you're saying that you provide that leadership and also uh, uh, accusing the current MP that uh, he's not available. How do you intend to be on the floor of parliament and also be in New Jersey North to offer that face-to-face -face interaction with your constituents? You can use 30 seconds to deal with this. Now, now just as you know, people, were vote, people had voted for us to go and represent them in parliament, mm. hoping that we will, send, we will send back to them a feedback. And I believe that as a member of parliament, from Friday to maybe on Monday, any time I realize that there is that free period, you need to quickly dash down to your constituency. If it is just even about two days or three days, make yourself available. Use a day to serve the rural folks. Use the other day to also serve those in the urban communities. You get my point? So that is what I mean by saying that we need to you know, open the door of interaction. We need to open the door of connectivity All right. so that our people will feel that we are carrying them along. We are moving with them. Mm -hmm. Currently, when you go to, you know, uh, like uh, Efigase, Asokore, and all the communities that you know, almost all our market centers are dead. They are virtually collapsed. And you blame this on leadership? Yes, because... I'm grateful. Mm -hmm. I'm grateful, Haruna, for your time. Let me go to Nana Jebuat. Nana, so uh, one key challenge Haruna has identified is the lack of leadership. Now, you are 
the Member of Parliament, he thinks that you do not interface regularly with the constituents. Has this come to your notice? And if it is indeed true, how do you intend to turn things around? I'm sure the, 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 the position that is just uh, articulated is not uh, correct. I'm a member of parliament who gets to the constituency every Friday and live there on Monday. Mm. And I have uh, regular interactions with the community. Whichever area which is part of the co co constituency has access to me. There are a lot of people who come to me with their problems. I, re uh, I am able to, re problems that I'm able to resolve, I deal with them. Mm. Uh, he was talking about the, 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 the point of uh, uh, lack of leadership. Leadership, I have been in, in this business for all this while. If, the, uh, since those days when I was a member of, uh, uh, I was the municipal chief executive. Mm. And I've had that kind of close collaboration with the people over the years. For the last uh, couple of years when I've been a member of parliament, I've engaged with all the people, all the chiefs, the, 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 the groups that we have. And they always have access to me. One minute. That they, 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 they exploit all the time. I don't believe that there's anybody in the constituency who would say that he has not had access to me. Mm. And that if he had any problem and he wanted to seek redress, he had not found me uh, to, to, to discuss whatever issue uh, 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 would come up for discussion. Mm. There have been a number of uh, 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 cases where people have come to me, I've engaged them. Uh, by way of school fees, by way of uh, uh, projects, programs. If you go to the constituency, I have a long list of projects that we are done. So if I'm executing these projects in the constituency, how can somebody say, say that I, I, I'm disengaged from the con co co constituency? Mm. I'm with them in whatever they're doing. Their aspirations are mine, and I share those aspirations with them. And I believe that the good people in this, in the, in this constituency mm. know what we have been able to do for mm. them about this period. Mm. I'm grateful uh, for your submission. But let me, before I move to Haruna, let me ask you again that this uh, uh, one. Now, Haruna is alleging the lack of leadership. Are you, do you think that perhaps he's just saying it in order to, to win uh, sympathy from the constituent? Or perhaps you think that there's a real case of uh, inadequate or lack of leadership in the constituent? I don't believe that uh, that is a problem that we, we have a leadership problem in the, in the constituency. We, they, they have just demonstrated that we have had this kind of regular interactions with the people. Mm. And the people have access to, to me. And so if, what kind of leadership is he talking about in the constituency or where? If I'm able to engage stakeholders, I, I'm able to do the necessary networks to ensure that the people get what they need mm. uh, within our, my means. I, I'm providing the kind of leadership that they, they require for uh, uh, their own development. Mm -hmm. And I'm grateful for uh, your time. Let me come to you, Haruna. Uh, we'll continue from another issue uh, right from here. Now, uh, let's come back to this issue that has been uh, quite a headache for uh, members of parliament. The key thing is that some aspiring candidates have promised other things that uh, as legislators, they are not mandated or sometimes cannot do. But for the sake of winning votes, they have promised. For instance, uh, building of schools, a uh, building of hospitals, building of markets and all that. Uh, some have argued that these are not the mandates of a member of parliament. The member of parliament is expected to go to uh, the parliament house and legislate. Now, Haruna, if you get the mandate, how well do you intend to do your work as a member of parliament by way of legislation and also perhaps lobby for projects to uh, speed up development in New Jabi North. Two minutes. My brother, just as you said, um, I just want uh, my senior colleague, Neji Boateng, to really understand that if he's saying that that cause of complaint or concern from our people, we suggest that um, he is not in touch with them. If he's saying that is not true, then clearly, uh, in fact, he's not on the ground. Mm -hmm. That has been the major concern, even the major critics from within his own party. But let me deal with the substantive question that you ask. Mm. As a member of parliament, yes, you've been voted to go to parliament to make laws. But at the same time, it lies on you to have a lobbying ability or scale to be able to push to your constituency projects and developments. I am not a member of parliament yet. One more minute. But I've been able to lobby. Currently, there are two major educational infrastructure that is going on in my constituency. One, 
is at SDA Senior High School, and the other one is at Ghana, uh, uh, Ghana Senior Ghana's, Ghana Secondary School. If, just as I said, even though I'm not an MP, but when I push in the request and I was able to knock at the right door, <laughs> thankfully, His Excellency the President of the Republic of Ghana, uh, Mr. John Dramani Mahama, was able to respond to this news quickly. And now, as I speak to you, the project is about 60 percent complete. So you, 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 don't, you don't have to subject yourself to say that you've just been voted into power to just go and sit in parliament, and that is all what you're supposed to do. You need to make sure that you lobby your way around to make sure that the issues and the problems and the challenges that confront your people, mm. you've been able to address it. And I believe that is what we are lacking currently in New Drab enough. I, I thought Nana was going to be specific okay. in terms Rapper of what he has been able to seconds. do so that you'll be able to critique exactly what he's talking about. Okay. I have made mention of the numerous things that I've been able to do in my constituency. Mm. And I would have wished he also comes around, you know, with specifics. Right. So that I'll be able to deal with the matter as it is. Mm. By leaving it just to say that, well, the work of a member of parliament is just to sit I'm in grateful, parliament. I'm grateful, Harona. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Nana, uh, let's quickly go back to this issue. Members of parliament being uh, looked at as agents of development to the extent that some of them are asked to pay school fees, some of them are asked to put up uh, school infrastructure, asked to put up hospitals, and then also uh, do their legislative work. Now, how have you handled that in such a way that they do not see you only as legislating, but also an agent of development? Well, thank you. Let me make a, a, a quick reference. You can react to what, that what quickly. he just said, mm. that uh, he's been able to lobby for some projects uh, to go to the constituency. Mm. These are World Bank projects that we are all aware of. Uh, I had this engagement with him at Ghana Senior Secondary School the, 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 the past week. And he was taking credit for these projects, which are World Bank projects that we had approved of in Parliament. Mm. And uh, then saying that he is seen to the execution of those projects. I don't think that is fair because right. we have the uh, administrative structures in place. And the administrative structures, the regional administration, all those agencies are there which have responsibilities for these things. I don't believe he should try and take credit for this. And then he was talking about, or well, let me re react to your, the, 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 the question you, you mm. posed, that uh, members of parliament, basically uh, we are supposed to be le uh, making laws. Right. Okay. But we are development agents. And as development agents, uh, some requirement is imposed on us to ensure that some of these things just uh, uh, gets put in place. Mm. That is why we do development. That is why as members of parliament, One more minute. we get some uh, uh, resources that go into these uh, areas of development and out of that we've done he was talking about specifics if you, you go around the entire constituency we have a lot of them we have uh, renovated community centers paved community centers paved uh, 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 done uh, renovation of, of schools we are doing a, 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 a three unit classroom block at Oyoko presently. Mm -hmm. If you go to uh, Fijasi, we are doing a community center for them. We are doing a community center for Sushen. We, 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 we have put in place solar lantern programs for Empire. Uh, uh, All those projects are ongoing. And uh, uh, I think that if he wants to know about those projects. These are, this list is pro was provided by the municipal assembly. He mm. can go there and see what we have done over this uh, number of years. Mm. I'm grateful Nana Ajib mm. Watin is the incumbent member of parliament. I was asking for another four year term. Haruna, let me quickly ask you this before we move on. Why are you taking credit for a project uh, that uh, was sent to the constituency by the World Bank? My brother, do you think that the World Bank sitting in Europe could identify that there has been a fire that gutted Ghana Senior High School dormitory block. Sitting in Europe, then they just say, Ghana's, Ghana, Ghana's needs a two-story dormitory. Then it's just done. When the situation happened, I went there. The MP went there. He made a donation. I realized the donation was not enough. We need something that is sustainable, something that will be there for generations yet unborn. And I am saying that my witness is the headmaster of the school. Mm -hmm. I went to him for him to draft a letter of request to the appropriate quarters. I took the letter and I had the support of my regional minister at the time. And that is the more reason why the headmaster acknowledged and show appreciation for me during the day of during the day of Thanksgiving when I went there with Nene J. Boatin. Mm. But he is the member of parliament. He was supposed to have carried this burden, but mm. I did it. All right. 
I'm grateful. Now, any reaction before we move yes, on? Yes, uh, let's ask him when this project started. This project started before the fire outbreak at a, 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 a Ghana a senior <laughs> high school. Mm. That project started before the fire outbreak. That dormitory block and the dining hall yeah. project, these are both World Bank projects which mm. are ongoing mm. in, the, in the constituency. So mm. why should he come and hope to take uh, credit for something mm. that is not, be, is right. not initiated? All right. No, no, I'm we, grateful. We have to be fair to the, uh, to, uh, the constituents there. We don't take credit for things that we, 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 we have not All right. Your constituents are watching and they will make the right choice from what you've said. Now, let's move on and stay on the role of members of parliament. Now, this I issue uh, is quite huge when you, you go to the metropolis and the municipalities. The issue of rent advance and the fact that there's a rent law that all of us have agreed that indeed this rent law is a cake and oat and it is killing a lot of uh, people in this country. Now, Haruna, in two minutes, tell me, this issue is quite troublesome because a lot of people are unable to rent because they cannot afford 24 months of 200 cities and uh, that sums up into some 2,400 plus. Now, it is being alleged that members of parliament have uh, reneged on their duty. The reason is that they have not acted on changing that old law. Some of them have argued that, look, we cannot uh, just put it in that we need a private member's motion in order to move that. If you get the mandate of your constituent, if Fidrasi is a municipality and people are renting, they are paying two years advance, which is against the law, how do you intend to perhaps lobby for that act to be looked at for the second time? Two minutes you can deal with this. No, no, just as you said, society is dynamic, society is changing. And for that matter, the honours lies on us, should I get the nod to represent my people in Parliament, that you put our heads together to make sure that we will do or we will take up decisions that are popular, decisions that will inure to the benefit of the entire community. And aside these efforts, I believe that some aspect of it deals with education. We, the, the, there must be a proper platform whereby we'll be able to engage, you know, landowners as well as you know, um, landowners and tenants, whereby you have a stakeholders consultation and meeting, then you look at the best way to deal with this matter once and for all. Because one, it is one thing formulating the laws in parliament, and the other thing making sure that the law works mm. to its logical conclusion. So I believe that we need to look at it from this point of view, whereby aside making the laws, or aside ratifying the law, making sure that we do what is right for the community. 30 seconds. Once we finish with it, we need to also engage those on the ground. We engage, as I said, the landowners and the tenants and other key players within, you know, within, within, within the set Ten seconds. to make sure that we do what is right. And I believe that at the end of the day, there wouldn't be any room for complaint. There wouldn't be any room for agitations. And at the end of the day, we will take a popular decision that we know to the benefit of mm. people. Harun, I'm grateful. Let me go to Nana Ejebwa. Nana, has this issue come to your notice? You have been in parliament. And uh, how has parliament, or perhaps uh, you representing uh, New Jabi North, uh, taking this issue because your constituents seem to be complaining? Well, uh, uh, the issue of uh, rent, I think that it's uh, a microcosm of the kind of problem that we have. Uh, generally, we have housing problems, people find it difficult to have uh, uh, suitable accommodation, that kind of thing. And then to, the, to, the, to a large extent, a, a large number of people would have to rely on facilities that are provided by other people. Mm. And so for, uh, for that reason, rent arrangements put in place sometimes two year advance it becomes a, a bothersome for the, a lot of people and uh, there's the need for us to look at that law mm. and uh, you know with our system many of these laws that uh, come to us that we work on by way of uh, parliament would have to uh, emanate from uh, the, from the policy maker that's the government and uh, in our respect if the proposals come and we have to deal with them, we'll deal with them. And I think that uh, it's about time we look at that thing to make sure that we, we streamline the arrangements such that we, can, we will not have a situation where we have those prohibitive rents that uh, people uh, ask for when we go in to look for accommodation. Mm -hmm. so and I think that we, as, uh, as uh, parliamentarians, these issues, when they come to us, I think that we'll provide the necessary uh, support to ensure that the right 
type of arrangements are put in place for the law to be amended. We have to wrap up this conversation uh, this morning. Let me start with Haruna in the wrap up. Haruna, look into your uh, camera and tell your constituent what you are sacrificing for them, uh, for the fact that they are going to give you uh, their mandate to go represent them in Parliament. Thank you very much, Nana. Just as I started, New Jabin North constituency is a constituency that is so dear to my heart. But when I wake up in the morning, looking at the kind of problems and challenges that confront us, trust me, I cry down to my soul. And I believe that looking at how things are moving, it is not yet broken down into tatters. There is hope for the youth, and I believe the old girls and the old fishes have had their turn. It is time to give way for a young person, a very dynamic person, very articulate person, someone with an, uh, you know, an innovative ability to be able to turn things around to make sure that New Job Enough is able to move out from socioeconomic decadence. Other than that, where we are, trust me, my brother, there's no hope. When you wake up in the morning, there are those of our youth who need just a leader to go to to seek advice. And you, there is no, they, you, they cannot even find their MP. Your MP is nowhere to be found. Mm -hmm. Aside that, my brother, when you hit New Job Enough, as I keep saying, just 10 seconds we more. are lacking behind. Precisely because we don't have the right leader to lobby for massive development and projects. As I speak to you, yesterday I was at Pipeline. The stretch from Pipeline Junction to Deep Pipeline, okay. that place is very bad. And a wrap up for me. Wrap and for brother, me. to just sum up my submission, I believe that there is hope for New Job Enough and giving me the opportunity, even though I'm not yet there, but looking at the sacrifices and what I've been able to do for, the, for my constituents from supplying to them water projects, registering for them on health, registering them on health insurance free of charge, of which I'm hoping to expand it to cover as many as about 10,000 before even we go for this election. I believe that just as the account man says, your food we are in piano. I'm grateful, Haruna, for your time. And now, uh, look into your constituents' eyes and tell them uh, why they should renew their mandate and what you're sacrificing for them. We're wrapping up on well, this. Uh, over the years, I've had a very good relationship with the good people of New Jersey North. Uh, by my leadership in terms of uh, representing them in Parliament, uh, I've become an instrument for development, which is very visible for them in the, in the constituency. In terms of uh, relationship, uh, accessibility, whatever, we, we, we have been working very, very hard at it. And uh, I believe that uh, we, we struck a good marriage. The people have confidence in me, they, they think that I'm the right person to lead them to, into the, the next election. And uh, they, w it is my belief that the people are aware that we are, we, we are looking for something else, which is the presidential uh, power. Once we get that, we complement that, and then we will ensure that development happens in New York and North. Oh, they, during the last uh, Kufour administration, the last eight years, the kind of development that took place in New Jersey, I think that people there uh, see this development, they, they were part of that development, mm. and they think that their best bet is to be with us, the new, new, new patriotic party, by voting for me as a member of parliament and making sure that we return, uh, we, we vote resoundingly for Anaku Vado. Uh, during the next election. I am grateful. Naneji Boatin is incumbent member of parliament for uh, New Jersey North of the NPP and also asking for a renewal of his mandate. Haruna Apawiri Dui, the aspiring member of parliament for the NDC in that same constituency. Gentlemen, I'm grateful for your time this morning. We're grateful that uh, you joined us here in our studio. Another handshake to wrap up uh, the show for this morning. Uh, sure, we'll see you before again November uh, 7.